Greetings, citizens, and welcome back to the Hidden Dagger Inn. I'm your host, Al Pionyu, and tonight we're going to go ahead and start to speculate and break down what some of the expectations are for the archetypes of Ashes of Creation. And tonight we're going to start with the Rogue, so without further ado, let's jump in. One of the most anticipated archetypes in the upcoming MMORPG is the Rogue Archetype. This class is a personal favorite of mine and typically divides opinion on whether you love it or you hate it. Before delving into what we can expect, it's crucial to understand the origins and development of the rogues. The rogue, which didn't appear in the original 1974 Dungeons and Dragons game, evolved from the thief class. Over the years, this class developed signature skills such as lockpicking and detecting and disarming traps, pickpocketing and sneaking, what today is known as stealth. As rogues grew in popularity, their skill sets expanded to include abilities like critical strike builds and applying poisons. Subclasses such as assassins, tricksters, and acrobats emerged, allowing for more specialized roles. Rogues have consistently been portrayed as resourceful and versatile, adept in combat and in scenarios that demand cunning and strategy. The evolution of the rogue character in the games like Dark Age of Camelot, DAOC, showcases their growing diversity. Depending on the realm you choose, players can select from three distinct styles of rogue. In Dark Age of Camelot, you had the Infiltrator, Shadowblade, and Nightshade, each with their own unique skills, some do wielding, some not, some having more prowess with magic, backstabbing, and employing poisons. The key takeaway was each class was integral to the realm, or in our case, the node, in providing skills suited for espionage, sabotage, and strategically eliminating pivotal adversaries. They are invaluable for their prowess in penetrating enemy lines undetected and offering essential intelligence or support in the ongoing conflict. Then along came World of Warcraft and introduced many, many more players to Rogue, offering three talent specializations that catered to different play styles. They were Assassination, which specialized in poison and bleed effects, excelling in delivering sustaining damage over time. Then you had Outlaw, formerly Combat, focused on a brawler style approach with direct damage featuring abilities that boosted in melee combat. And then you had Subtlety, prioritizes stealth and shadow tactics, enabling potential initial strikes and improving abilities while cloaked. Those are just a few examples of some of my beginning expectations of what we should see from the Rogue class. While many of the previous games would allow Rogues to implement stun locks, which would completely disable you while they violated your person, I don't believe Intrepid will be going that direction, as they describe the Rogue as being more physically disabling by applying bleeds or snares. I do think that they will get access to a stun, but like all stuns in CC, they will have diminishing returns. As we continue to go over my expectations for the Rogue and Ashes of Creation, the first thing we know not to expect is stealing. Steven must have been looted too much, so I feel he has a bias against these dastardly thieves. It is possible there will be a quest involving stealing. A list of things that I do expect the Rogue to have. Access to poisons of varying degrees. Poisons will be essential for adding the desired debuff to the targets, but will play an integral role also for crafters in the economy. A list of poisons I expect to see, but not limited to, are of course your standard damage over time poisons. These are perhaps the most common type of poison used by rogues. They inflict damage gradually over a set period of time, allowing rogues to weaken their opponent without needing to maintain constant physical attack. This type of poison is perfect for the hit and run tactic. Paralytic poisons. These poisons are used to immobilize or significantly slow down the target. This can prevent enemies from escaping or reacting, giving the rogue and their allies a strategic advantage in the battle. Debilitating poisons. These reduce the effectiveness of the target by lowering their attack power, accuracy, and combat capabilities. This type of poison can be crucial in team fights when reducing the enemy's combat effectiveness can turn the tide of a battle. Mind-altering poisons that confuse or disorient the target, causing them to misjudge distances, attack their allies, or fail to cast spells accurately. Numbing poisons, used to decrease the target's sensation or reaction speed, making it harder for them to defend against subsequent attacks. This can be particularly effective in duels or smaller skirmishes. Something I would like to see as a game mechanic, similar to those that we saw by the rangers and fighters, but applied to rogues as far as their poisons, particularly in a way that they can allow for faster strategic gameplay for rogues to quickly adapt to their tactics during combat. 
An obvious expectation is high evasion, which hopefully we can have an ability that will unlock if we evade or parry, possibly turning it into a small chain to allow an increase of skill by the players. I am also hopeful that armor type will affect evasion capabilities in the game. For instance, a rogue wearing plate armor should not be as agile as one equipped in cloth. Positional attacks. If you come up from behind someone, I would expect there to be devastating damage. Also, I do believe any class that gets caught sitting should automatically receive critical damage, which would increase the attentiveness to their surroundings. This next ability of the archetype is wildly the most controversial, and I'm going to break it down and give you my take on it as it's something I'm very passionate about. Yep, you guessed it. It's stealth. Now, I'm a supporter of full stealth, as I have been on both sides of the dagger, if you will. I understand how to be aware of my surroundings when I'm not a rogue, and I know how to pick targets in situations I might find the best success for a rogue. There are plenty of games that have incorporated full stealth. Dark Age of Camelot, people are still playing it. World of Warcraft, the most popular MMO to date. Arc Age had full stealth. Warhammer Online had full stealth, even if only for 60 seconds. These are naming just a few very successful games, and there are many more. I have seen much misinformation being spread about stealth over the years, and the best way to deal with that is to hear it straight from Steven's mouth himself. Reiterate, because people are like, there's not going to be any stealth. He wasn't saying that there's not going to be stealth, or that it's part of a class like an archetype feature. Oh, there absolutely is stealth. Stealth yeah. is 100% uh, an, an option in the game. It's not going to render yourself or the individual who uses the stealth um, completely obscured. You're still going to be able to identify. There's going to be uh, utility skills that can reveal stealth from a PvP perspective. Um, there's going to be perceptions that certain NPCs have that can see through stealth, like tremor sense or life sense. You know, there are there are elements and mechanics that relate to stealth and how it is balanced in the game. Uh, it's not going to be similar to stealth that's in, found in other games where you know the target is rendered completely uh, uh, invisible. Um, they can make it past every enemy NPC or monster. They can use stealth at all times. You know, these are these are elements that is a tit for tat. You know, these are these are components of class kits that are going to have corresponding um, counters as it relates to other classes as well. One of my favorite things is when we were kind of showing off uh, some of our combat through Apocalypse uh, is that people would change into like structures in the world and people would be like, oh, that's just a fountain. And then you'd be you'd be like going by and then it comes out and gags you. When I heard Steven's answer in the first video, I was concerned that we might not achieve full stealth. I'm still not completely sure that we will, but after watching the next clip, I felt more hopeful. It seems there might be a way to enhance and fully implement stealth, possibly by doubling down on the archetype. YTY Evil from the Blue Dawn Guild asks, will any other classes get stealth or is that only going to be for rogues? So stealth as a, as a primary skill is going to be reserved for the rogue archetype. Yeah. However, <clears throat> if you have a, another archetype and you've taken a secondary class and you've chosen the rogue secondary class, there will be augment ability application to some of your primary existing skills. Yeah. And that's yeah. as it stands now, of course. Right. Um, that might change in the future, but yeah. for right now, we picture the rogue as being the master of stealth. Absolutely. So. And I truly hope that the rogue is the master of stealth, because for a character class that generally moves slower in stealth mode, not being completely invisible and possibly having a time limit on this ability could introduce additional layers of strategy which is already intricate. This would require players to carefully plan their attacks and manage these constraints effectively, which already is a struggle. Allowing them not to have a full stealth or true stealth and always be somewhat visible will make an already hard task, especially when trying to get by a mage in his Eye of Sauron and a ranger detect abilities, along with every Tom, Dick, and Harry just looking for an odd shape moving towards him down the road. If the stealth is too easily seen by other players or there's too many detect mechanics, it's going to lead to far less successful percentage of attacks making me think that the rogue should just invest in acrobatics or parkour, and it will be running for its life most of the time, especially when trying to get close to an important group target. Stealth is the primary skill of the rogue, and if it fails more times than not, the rogue will fail as a class. 
They could also have smoke bombs as an option, but again, this puts a big sign on someone saying, ah, someone's trying to attack me, rendering the whole surprise effectively useless. For me, I believe the biggest thing that most people worry about, and I'd love to hear your comments down below, is the fear of being one-shotted. And that's not fun for anyone, really. Even as a rogue player, I get that. That being said, the amount of damage should be high, but also depending on the type of archetype you're attacking. The real reason for good stealth is what I feel like rogues and rangers are all about, and will be, in my humble opinion, a paramount aspect in Ashes of Creation, and that's a proper scouting team. Being a large Ren Kai, I doubt I will find a bush big enough to cover my body. Should I be forced to play a small character because my stealth sucks? Stealth teams give proper intelligence to their guilds on the most opportune times to attack and will be a huge factor in guild success or failures. My last thought about the stealth ability is it's been a staple of successful MMOs since the beginning of a time. And my mama always says, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Regardless, Steven appears to have a solid vision for how stealth should function, so I'm willing to wait and try it out in Alpha 2 and see how effective it really is. Another aspiration I have for rogues is the ability to climb walls, specifically during a node or castle siege. This was done very well in Dark Age of Camelot and gives rogues an objective to harass the ramparts and the defenders, giving them something to worry about other than yelling down telling me that my father smells of elderberries. As far as party dynamics go, the ability to be sought after in groups has long been an issue for rogues, as people often prefer other classes for DPS roles. However, with 8-man groups, it appears Intrepid has a keen understanding of this dynamic. Giving rogues the capability to detect traps and uncover hidden treasures enhances the appeal of the rogue class after all. I mean, who doesn't like extra loot? This feature alone should make rogues more valuable addition to any group. Regardless of the DPS hierarchy, I believe rogues should lead in melee physical combat, offering a balance with their limited health pool, similar to how rangers and mages work for range. Rogues are characterized by high evasion and effective bleeding and slowing tactics through the use of various poisons tailored to the situation. The strategy of playing a rogue must be carefully considered, as one mistake could be disastrous. Given that combat is intended to last around 30 seconds, the typical rogue strategy of gaining the upper hand through stealth remains vital. However, I advocate against mechanics that allow one-shot kills, as these offer no chance for counterplay and or escape, a problem seen in games like Arcage, largely due to their gear system. A topic I'm very interested to learn more about, and we really won't know until Alpha 2, because further details will come out on the armor system. And I propose that wearing plate armor should reduce a class's mobility by, I'd say, at least 10% to balance it. Its weakness against magic will not be enough to deter people from using it for the extra physical protection. I don't want to see the world of Vera with everybody wearing plate. Because let's face it, a direct hit from a fireball will still be devastating whether you're wearing plate, leather, or cloth. Traditionally, rogues wear leather, and I hope this continues, although adopting cloth could be interesting if it provided specific advantages. Now, also plate wearers, I hope that there's a mana regeneration mechanic with it, since all classes are going to have mana. Now, you're saying peon. That's a whole lot of utility the rogue has, and you would be correct. But it will be imperative that Intrepid make the player make key decisions relating on how to build their rogue through talent points that suit their rogue playstyle. This should lead to some very interesting builds, as I wouldn't expect a rogue to have the best of all those abilities. So there you have it, folks. That's what I have for my expectations for the rogue, and I'm confident that Intrepid's going to deliver for us. And I fully expect, as they said, that it will be an Alpha 2, and I also believe it's going to be the last reveal of archetypes that we get. Because I think Intrepid knows that everybody will be wanting to see what the rogue can do. Because whether you're a lover of the rogue or a hater of the rogue, you're going to want to know what that bad boy can do. If you're still watching, as always, I'd like to say thank you. And hit that like and smash that subscribe button as it's free and it really helps me out being a new channel. Also leave your comments down below on what your thoughts are on the significance of the stealth mechanics in Ashes of Creation and what you'd like to see from the rogue archetype. And if you're looking for a community to join and talk about Ashes of Creation, come stop by the Hidden Dagger in Discord and come say hi to me. Also, you can catch me every Saturday live on Twitch TV. Thank you, Vera, and have a great day. Work complete.